how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is David Clark and this is my old sled. Yeah, so Ultimax sent me some of their XS belts to try out. I thought, great opportunity to do a video for you guys. So I'm going to take the sled over to my buddy's shop. It's kind of a cold day today. Um, I'll show you how to inspect your belt, so how you know that it's time to replace it. I'll show you how to replace the belt and then we'll talk about the adjustments that you need to do after you've replaced it. Alright, so I'm going to take the sled over and I'll see you there. All right, I'll just give you a quick explanation of how your transmission and your sled works. This isn't a clutching video, so we'll go into more detail in that in a later video. Really, we're just talking about belts, but I think it helps if you have a bit of an understanding how the transmission in the sled works, and then you understand a little bit more about why the belt is so important and the kind of stresses that are on it. Okay, the transmission in your sled is something called a CVT, or Continuously Variable Transmission. So there's three components to it. There's a drive pulley, usually called a primary clutch, a driven pulley, usually called a secondary clutch, and a belt that joins the two together. Each of these pulleys has one side or sheave that's fixed and one that moves. So the CVT continuously varies the ratio between primary and secondary clutch. The way it works is as you increase engine RPM, the primary clutch spins faster. You've got weights inside that move because of the centrifugal force and they push that outer sheave in against the belt. They squeeze it and they start it spinning. The secondary clutch, when it spins, it opens. So as you move faster, it opens wider. This belt will slide down farther into the secondary. And basically that reduces uh, the radius that belt is turning on this end and increases it on this end. And that varies that ratio. So unlike a transmission that has gears that shift in stages, this has an infinite range of combinations and it's a very smooth transmission throughout the entire power range. So there's a tremendous amount of force that's acting on your drive belt when you're riding, both laterally as your clutches squeeze that belt, and longitudinally there can be thousands of pounds of force on this belt. So you really need to keep an eye on these, inspect them properly, and replace them when they start to show signs of wear. Now drive belts are made to deal with that force. So they're primarily they're made out of rubber. The compounds are going to vary a little bit from manufacturer to manufacturer. They have these teeth or cogs. Uh, now that's not a cooling feature like some guys think, and they don't grab anything. What they're actually designed for to add strength to the belt and then in terms of that longitudinal force that we talked about what it has is cordage that runs around the inside of the belt and that's Kevlar so very high tensile strength so obviously it's important to inspect that belt carefully so certainly once a season if you're like the casual rider then you want to make sure that you know once or twice in the season you're actually taking it off and giving it a really good inspection and then before you go for a long ride, I don't think it's a bad idea when you check your sled to take that belt cover off and give it a good looking over. All right, so what is it we're looking for when we inspect a belt? A lot of it's pretty obvious. Um, if you look around the whole belt and you look between each of those teeth and cogs, do you see any cracks? Uh, do you see any chunks of rubber missing? Do you see any teeth that are missing? Any of those kinds of things. The big one is cordage. If you see any cordage that's starting to come out of the side of the, uh, the belt, those are all signs that you need to replace that belt. Some of it's not that obvious. If you take the belt and you kind of hold it this way and you look down the sides of it, the wear should be pretty even all the way around. So if you see any spots where it's bowed in, kind of like an hourglass, that's a sign that belt's sort of burned in there. It's been sitting in one spot and the clutch has been spinning. That's another sign that you want to replace it. So even if the belt looks fine, you may notice when you're riding, there's some signs and symptoms that tell you your belt's getting worn out. So you may find off the start that it's kind of like starting in second gear because what happens is that as that bell gets worn, it slips further down into the secondary and it'll change the performance. You may hear some noise from the belt, probably not unless it's really, really worn out. You won't hear a high-pitched squeal like you do when uh, one of the belts in your car gets worn out, but you can hear a little bit of noise, particularly if they get loose. In terms of how long is your belt going to last, that's going to vary huge from rider to rider. So some guys come up to the cottage, they take their sled out two or three times in the winter. And other people, they ride all season long, they put thousands of kilometers on their sleds. But it's not just how much you ride, but how you ride. So somebody that's a fairly conservative uh, rider that just sort of goes out and does the trails a little bit is going to get a lot more life out of a belt than somebody who's out there with a throttle pin screaming across a lake, you know, even if you're putting the same number of kilometers on the belt. I picked up a really, really good tip from a buddy of mine, Danny. He knows so much about sleds. He's been working on them for years. He raced them. Really, really obvious tip, but so useful. Write the number of kilometers down when you change your belt, right? Because then next time when it's time for a new belt, you know how many miles you put on that belt. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the belt on this machine. This is an old Altimax belt, and it was on the machine when I got it, so I really don't know how old it is. Looking at it, it doesn't look too bad, but I'm pretty sure that it's worn. Okay, so I'm going to start by opening the tool kit from my sled, and I'm looking for this. So this is a belt removal tool. It's going to let me open the two halves of that secondary clutch and get the belt off. All right, so on the secondary, there's a little arrow here that shows me where this threaded hole is this tool fits into. I'm going to thread it in carefully. I don't want to strip it. It is aluminum. And so if you see that as I turn this, see that belt dropping down? Okay, I took the toolbox out of the way. Once that secondary is loose, that belt should just pop right out of there. All right, before we put that new belt on, I'm going to take a second. I want to clean the inside of these pulleys, so I'm going to take something mildly abrasive like a red scotch Brite pad and some Bombardier pulley and flange cleaner. And I'm just going to give the inside of these pulleys a good clean and scuff and get rid of all the old belt residue and dirt. All right, so we're ready to install our new belt. I'm going to put an Altimax XS belt on this machine. Now, I like the Altimax uh, belts. In terms of what belt you should buy, I try not to flog products on this channel so I don't do paid advertisements. If I have products in videos, it's usually because I think I'm providing something interesting to you guys. So do your own research, read the reviews, look at the manufacturer's websites and make your decision. So yeah, I did a ton of reading on these belts. I read all kinds of reviews. There's a lot of guys that write a lot harder and a lot farther than I do that, that love these belts. You know, when you're reading reviews, you know, of course you're going to get people that, oh, I bought that belt and it blew. So I mean, in that case, was there something wrong with the clutch? Did they break the belt in properly? Uh, the, you know, the other thing with a product is that anything mass produced can have a defect. So what matters to me is does the manufacturer stand behind it? And that's the one thing I really like about this company. They have a great warranty. So they warranty this product for a year, which I think is pretty solid for something like a belt. Basically, you go online, fill out a form, take a picture of the belt, they'll send you a new belt. Now, when you're doing your research and particularly you're reading customer reviews, you got to take them with a grain of salt, right? Because one thing I have learned since I put the YouTube channel up is how attached people get to the brands that they buy. So when I did my two-stroke oil video, I had people like, oh, you have to use this brand of oil. When I did my spark plug video, so I, I don't know if you saw it, I did a video about fouling spark plugs. And this gentleman who obviously didn't get very much affection when he was younger, <laughs> posted this comment. And his feeling was that I was filing plugs because I used NGK. And that's okay, if that's his opinion. But this was basically a profanity-laced tirade about NGK spark plugs that ended with him telling me where I could shove that NGK spark plug. I can't believe somebody would be that attached to a spark plug that they would be rude to somebody they didn't know. But there you go. So read those reviews with a grain of salt. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install the new belt on the machine. When you install a new belt, you should always do it so that you can read the writing the right way up when it's on the machine. That's not because the belt is directional though, right? It doesn't really matter if it goes on the other way, but it should always go on the same way. So if you take it off to do some clutch work, or you take it off for storage, it should go back on the same way. So if you put it on like that, you know how you put it on last time. Okay, I'm gonna reinstall the belt. Same way I took it off, I'm gonna hook it around the primary. And then I'm just going to work it around the secondary. And then I'm going to unscrew this tool. All right, now the new belt is in, I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments to the secondary. So what I'm doing, I'm adjusting that pulley in and out so the belt sits at the right height in the pulley. Uh, the reason you can do that is to accommodate belt wear, right? So the previous owner had adjusted this pulley in as the belt began to wear. Now I'm going to adjust it back out to accommodate the new belt. Okay, now with the rev chassis, there's an adjuster in the center of the secondary, and I've got three bolts. I loosen this off, and I can turn that. Other sleds, the bolts themselves, are what you use to adjust the secondary. So you may have like an Allen screw in the middle, and then a lock nut around the outside. You loosen the lock nut, and then you adjust the screws to adjust the secondary. In this case, I'm going to loosen these three bolts off, and then that'll let me change this dial. Um, I'm going to adjust it back out a little bit. So these markings are just for reference. You can put it anywhere you want along that range. So yeah, we're going to keep making fine adjustments until we get the bottom of these teeth or the outer side of that belt just flush with the outer edge of the secondary. And then we're just going to tighten these adjusters back up good and snug.
Okay, now the other thing you can check is deflection. So most guys, when they change a belt, they're just gonna go by where it sits in the secondary. That's probably fine, right, if that's all you do. Um, but if I look at my manual, it also shows me how to check deflection. So with, but to do that, you're gonna need something that tells you how much force you're putting on the belt, as well as how far it's moving. So I'm gonna use this uh, track tool from Woody's. So I use this in my track adjustment video. But if I pick the center point here, and I've got a straight edge here, it just shows me how much it's moving. If I put, that 25 pounds on here. Yeah, I'm getting about an inch and a quarter deflection in that belt, so that should be fine. So that's deflection, and the service manual does say check deflection every time you put a new belt on. Really, the main adjustment you wanna focus on is that height in the secondary. If you've got the right belt on your machine and the belt is in good shape, and you have that adjusted right, your deflection should be right. So that's how you adjust the secondary on this machine. It's gonna vary slightly depending on the type of clutch you've got. So one suggestion for you if you've got an older sled, get online and find the service manual for it, because it'll show you how to make adjustments like that for your machine. All right, the new belt is on and adjusted, and that was really, really easy, guys. If you've been hesitating, just go for it. It's not hard at all. So a couple other tips for you. You want to make sure that you've always got a spare belt on the sled. So if the one you took off isn't in bad shape, use that as your spare. Because obviously, if you're out on the trail and you blow a belt, you're not going to have a way to get home. All right, when you throw a new belt on your machine, it's really important you break it in properly, right? So you're not going to like this, but for the first 30 miles, you should ride at half throttle or less. Give this belt a chance to wear in and fit your clutches. If you just throw it on and then you pin it and scream across a lake before the belt has a chance to wear and you're really going to shorten the life of that belt. And that, my friends, is how you inspect and change and adjust the belt on your snowmobile. I hope you liked that video. If you did, I hope you take a second and hit that thumbs up for me. If you like videos just like this one, take a second, subscribe to the channel. If you click that little bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Till next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Even if the belt looks fine, you may have... <clears throat> Even if the belt looks fine, there... The... So if the belt looks fine, you may have other symptoms... <sighs>